Alrighty, that was all the NBA we had to go over for today, besides the NBA Power Rankings. So let's re-update these Power Rankings. It is Friday, folks. We do this every single Friday, and we only have a couple more Fridays to do this. Once again, we are winding down the regular season here. So this is the do-or-die time. This is the sink-or-swim time. We are not kind of coddling any teams any longer out here. And once again, like we said in the opening here, I mean, every team has truly looked like they don't even know that is this that this is crunch time, that this is the back end of the season, that this is the, the time where you go out and secure your playoff spot. I mean, we've got real closeness, folks. The, uh, a game and a half separates the top four teams in the Eastern Conference. Go out and win these games. 76ers start dominating the competition. That's why we're kind of taking that minus five against the Clippers tonight. Can somebody take advantage of the back end of the season closeness out here? Can we all get it together, folks? A little bit of spit hit the camera. Let me wipe that off. That was a noticeable spot on there. Let me wipe that off real quick. All right. But, yeah, I mean, 76ers, you got us spitting all over the place. That's how much we believe that y'all can get it done, but y'all are not kind of showing us that domination. Can, start, can teams start dominating at the back end stretch? Please, we have been getting teams dominating. That's why they're going to be our top two here in our power rankings, folks. We've kind of alluded to it all show long, but there are two teams that are leaps and bounds ahead of every other team, folks, and they will will be rewarded in the top two spot of our power ranking. So uh, continue listening, watching on to figure out what those two teams are. I'll tell you, the 76ers are not one of those two teams. Yes, they're winning. They're taking care of business, which is good. We still like that. But can we get the domination, please? We've got to see some domination, folks. Uh, you got to establish yourself at some point. You must strike fear in your opposing teams by setting the precedent of, hey, we can win by 30. We just dropped, you know, we just won by 30 against the best team in the league. Let's do a hypothetical here. 76ers beat the Celtics by 30 points. Wow, wow, wow. That shows me dominance. Now, the next time, the next opponent that faces the 76ers, they should be shaking in their boots a little bit. Oh, my God. They just beat the best team in the league by 30 points. And we're not the best team in the league. So what are they going to do to us? That's what I want to see. And we don't have to see that every game. It's not going to happen every game. We know it's not going to. You're not going to win by 30 every single game. We get that. We get that. But I got to see it once in like a month stretch at minimum. Maybe twice in a month stretch at minimum. And we haven't gotten that by the 76ers. So can we please get that up a little bit? Um, well, I don't know why we were going on the 76ers that way. Uh, uh, but let's bring it back in. All right, y'all know our criteria now. We got to see some sort of dominance. We can't just see you taking care of business. All right, at some point, if you want to establish yourself as one of the best teams in the league, show me the dominance. Show me the dominance. So, if you're not showing me the dominance, I'm not going to move you up. And that's kind of what we have this week in our power rankings because no team is truly acknowledging, hey, it's the back end of the season. We've all got to step it up. So lag I'm so disappointed, folks. I'm disappointed in literally eight of these teams that are on the list currently. Two teams, they've uh, exceeded our expectations, absolutely. So once again, that's why they're going to be the top two teams in the league. Leaps and bounds, leaps and bounds. And I'm, I'm, I'm close, folks. I'm still kind of figuring out as we're going live here. But I may, may, may make the top two like 1A and 1B or just put them both at 1. I may not even separate them 1-2. I may put them both at 1. I will go 1-1, one, one, then 3. I'm not even going to have a number 2. They're both number 1s. That's kind of what, how I'm leaning so far. But we'll see how the rest of this goes. But here we go. Here we go. This was our power rankings last Friday. We update this every Friday. So, uh, last Friday, this was the power rankings going into this week leading up to today's new power rankings adjustment today, Friday. So here we go. For the last week, this was our power rankings. We had Raptors at 10, Jazz at 9, Nets at 8, Mavs at 7, 76ers at 6, Timberwolves at 5, Grizzlies at 4, Suns at 3, Bucks at 2, Celtics at the number one team in the NBA. <coughs> So now, we've seen what all these teams have done the last week. We've seen what all the other teams not in the top 10 have done this entire week. And we reorder them now accordingly to what they've done the last week, folks. And <clears throat> I'm going to let it know, be known right now, there are no new teams. No new teams have truly done enough to crack the top 10 unless we talk about number 10 like we are going to be right now. And uh, if, if I convince myself as I'm talking, I, I will add a new team. Because this number 10 team right here... Is 
is so lackluster for how healthy and deep they are, folks. So let's reorder the, uh, the new top 10 here and get it all rolling. So, new number 10 team. This team is dropping back again, again. The Jazz fall from number 9 to number 10, folks. And what the hell is going on with the Jazz? This is what they've done the last week. They had four games. They beat the Clippers and the Knicks. Congratulations. You beat the garbage Clippers and the garbage Knicks. Congratulations, Jazz. One of the deepest, healthiest teams in the NBA. You beat the Clippers in the Knicks. Do you want the applause for that? Because you're you're playing like you're looking for the applause of just beating the Knicks and the Clippers. Because then you also go on this week to face the Nets and the Celtics, two top 10 teams that we have here, and you lose against them. So we don't have the Clippers and the Knicks, Knicks in the top 10. But you beat them. But then we had the Nets and the Celtics in the top 10. And you lose against them. It's unexcusable at this point. This Jazz team has never shown any dominance all season. And here they are falling every week in our power rankings. We must see some dominance. Because if you're not dominating teams, you're going to be losing against those teams, folks. And that could, you know, trickle down to you losing against the bad teams. Whereas uh, that's where nobody wants to be in the NBA. Losing against the bad teams. That's a... Uh, that's, uh, like a woo moment, all right? Especially the final, like, month of the regular season. Couple of weeks of the regular season. Get it together. The Jazz have not gotten it together. They're too deep not to, folks. Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert, Bogdanovich. I mean, their bench. I mean, R R Royce O'Neal in the starting lineup. And then their bench, Hassan Whiteside and Rudy Gay and Jordan Clarks. I mean, this is a deep team, folks. The Celtics are not as deep as the Jazz. We love the Celtics, and they are. They're stringing it together. The J the Celtics bench. You want to know the Celtics bench, folks? It's Derek White, who is their best bench player. But then we're looking at Peyton Pritchard and Daniel Tice. I mean, come on. Come on. Come on, folks. That's not a good bench. It's getting it done. And we shout out to Coach. And we shout out the leadership on that team for the resurgence of the bench. But, I mean, we're talking about Peyton Pritchard and Daniel Tice, folks. I mean, come on. Literally, come on. They're winning with Peyton Pritchard and Daniel Tice playing, like, 20 minutes a game. I mean, like, come on, folks. Jazz, can you please step it up? Like, uh, like I am. I am. I'm done. I'm done with the Jazz. I'm done with the Jazz. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. You're out. You're out of the top 10. And I don't even want to see you back in the top 10. We'll still give you, you know, your chance to crack the top 10. I don't see you taking advantage. But I'm done with the Jazz. I'm kicking them out. And there hasn't really been that many great teams to really replace them with. That's why, you know, I didn't initially have a team getting into the top 10. And just keeping the Jazz at kind of in the top 10 at number 10, the worst position in the top 10. But I'm done. I'm moving them out, folks. I'm truly done. Um, uh, the Pelicans. Uh, I'm going to put the, uh, the Pelicans in. I'm going to put the Pelicans back in here, folks. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was going to do the Spurs, but the Pelicans did just beat the Spurs, so that's kind of going to be the tiebreaker. The last week, the Pelicans, they beat the Spurs, the Hawks, and the Bulls, and then they lost to the Hornets by three. Really, gosh dang close, so well done for the Pelicans, and they've been getting it done without other pieces. The Pelicans have been winning games without Brandon Ingram. I mean, come on, come on, you put, you take anybody off the Jazz. You take any of their starters off the Jazz, and they're not winning any games. But here we go, the Pelicans losing one of their second best players, the, you know, the number two of their big three, if you will. Maybe even you call them the number one. I don't know how you rank their big three of McCollum, Valanchunas, and Brandon Ingram. Uh, the only thing that we ask of you is that you do recognize that as a big three. That's a big three, folks. Let's all respect and recognize. But I'm putting the Pelicans at 10. Done with the Jazz. Can y'all start winning games, meaningful games? I'm done with the Knicks. are not a good win. The Knicks have never been a good win. The Clippers were a good win the first half of the season. And newsflash, we're not in the first half of the season. We're at the back end home stretch. Damn you, Jazz. You're out. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Pelicans, welcome to number 10. Welcome back into the top 10. Love having you here. Absolutely. Done with the Jazz. Oh, my God. Disgusted. Disgusted with the Jazz. I'm so disgusted with a lot of teams here this week, folks. Literally, a lot of teams I'm disgusted with. But Jazz, they take the, they ta they take the cake of the disgustedness. Done with the Jazz. Done with the Jazz. Jazz out of here. All right. So we got Pelicans at number 10. I'm uh, making that correction. I'm pulling it out last second. Don't care. 
All right, here we go. Number 10, or number 9. New number 9 team, and this team moves up one. Love it. Raptors. Raptors moving up from number 10 to number 9. Good, solid week. Getting right back on track. I'm seeing glimpses of what made this Raptors team so good kind of the first half of the season. They really kind of struggled right after the All-Star break. That's kind of when we saw the a little bit of a decline by the Raptors, but they're right back up there. We're getting great production by the starters. Fred Van Vliet, Siakam, OG Ananubi. We're getting it done by them. Thaddeus Young doing a really good off the bench. He's starting to get his role acclimated after the trade. So, Raptors this last week, uh, they went 2-2 two and two as well. Uh, their two wins against the 76ers, that's a great win. They beat the Cavs as well. Lose against the Bulls and the Lakers. Once again, these are unexcusable losses out here. Bulls, not good. Lakers, not good. We really need to start beating these teams. But, once again, I mean, this is what the teams have been doing all week long. Not beating the teams that they need to. I mean, this is why we're big-time disappointed in literally 10... Uh, Three through ten, we're big time disappointed in, but teams have to occupy. I mean, we can't just have, uh, can we? Do I dare do this, folks? Like, I literally only have two teams in the top ten. Do I? Uh, I that never occurred to me that I could do that. But I, I guess I could do that. It takes my fans. I'm the host here. Mm -hmm. Do I erase every, do I just have a top two? I mean, I'm this close to doing a top two, folks. Like, if you, these teams don't get their act right, I'll do it. That That's the deal. I will give every other team one week. Because if I don't see a step up here from number 10 through number three, I'm only having a top two come next Friday. I will do that, folks. Maybe I'll do a top three. Maybe I give it, you know, one more top three. But other than that, folks, I will cut it down. I will cut it down if I'm seeing lacklusterness by the majority of the teams in the NBA. So y'all got one week to truly shore up. Once again, this is the back end stretch. The number one seed in the West Eastern Conference is up for grabs. The number one seed in the Western Conference isn't up for grabs, but the number two seed is. Only five games separate number five and number two in the Western Conference. So go out and get the number two seed out there. Play in tournaments. It's neck and neck. The Spurs only two games out from the 10th seed getting in the playing tournament. Lakers, dig down, dig deep, keep that playing seed. There's, I mean, it's not like these teams have nothing to play for, folks, so everyone's just phoning it in. No, there's movement to be had. There's more playoff, better playoff spots to be had. Go and get them. But everybody's been so left cluster this week it's like they don't even care so if y'all don't care i'm not gonna care i'm not gonna extend the list to 10 teams next week i will only have the top two if y'all don't get it together damn get it together please i'm begging y'all Alrighty, so back to this. Raptors, you got to do better. You got to do better, but you did all right for what everybody else has been doing. So congratulations. You banked on everybody else being not good, so you move up one spot. Raptors now at number nine. All right, number eight seed, we're keeping the Nets. I don't even know what to do with the Nets. I want to move them out, but they had a good win this week, but then they also had bad losses. I mean, the Nets, they beat the Blazers and the Jazz. I mean, once again, congratulations on beating the Blazers, the absolute worst team in the league because they have nothing anymore. They're so decimated by the trades and the injuries. Congratulations, you beat the Blazers. Um, in their last win, it wasn't even this week. <laughs> their, la their last one good win wasn't even this week. So that's really kind of why they're at number eight but they beat the Blazers and the Jazz this week congrats and then they lose to the Grizzlies with no John Morant the hell is that the hell is that no John Morant and you lose now the Grizzlies have been good without John Morant but that's that's great for the Grizzlies bad for the Nets I mean the, you can look at it both ways folks and we are looking at it both ways a real bad loss to the Nets I mean and honestly folks and I know Kyrie Irving he can start playing at home games now so this is truly going to be Truly really going to kind of be the difference whether the Nets are good or not now that Kyrie Irving can kind of play every single game now. But, I mean, when, you know, Kyrie Irving the entire season, when you haven't been playing, when you couldn't have been playing home games, I mean, there was no excuse for this Nets team to kind of lose those games on the road then. I mean, there's no reason for Kyrie Irving to have off games. I mean, you got to make the most of all the games that you can play in, and he's not doing that, folks. So done with the Nets, and they're in trouble, folks, because they truly show that they need more than just Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant. They can't just do it, those two out on the floor. They can do it any given night, but it's not going to be consistent. We see this all the time here. They need other help. 
they need Seth Curry desperately on the floor. They really need Ben Simmons whenever he wants to get on the floor, but now he's injured and he can't play. So this Nets team is truly a mess. There's no leadership. There's no cohesiveness and all that. So, ugh, ugh, ugh. Dude, we all better hope. This Nets team better hope that they can get everybody good on the floor before the playoffs because they're going to kind of be thrown into a play-in tournament game. That's kind of the way it's shaping out right now. So, Nets, can y'all get it together? Losing against the Grizzlies with no John Morant? Ugh, ugh, disgusting. So disgusting. So, Nets staying at number eight, folks. Man, oh man, and literally all these teams are either moving up one or staying the same because everybody else was so lackluster. There's really no w way I can move any of these teams up because of what they've done this week, folks. Number 17, we are keeping the Mavericks. No movement there. Mavericks still staying at number 7. They had four games this week. They beat the Timberwolves and the Rockets. Once again, Timberwolves, that's a good win. I give them credit for that. But then you beat the Rockets. Who cares? The Rockets are so gosh dang bad. And then they ended up losing against the 76ers and the Hornets. I mean, what the hell is that? 76ers are a very good team. Uh, you know, we had 76ers at number 6. We can't move them up there. The Hornets have been getting it done as of recently. I probably could put the Hornets at number 10, but I'm going to go Pelicans over that. Uh, but it is a close race. Put a Hornets at number 11. Absolutely. 12. Absolutely. But, uh, and the Hornets have been getting it done. I mean, the Hornets have been, you know, backs against the wall, you know, 10th seed, all that. And then they've been fighting their way up. Now they're the ninth seed, all that. So Mavericks losing against the Hornets, losing against the 76ers. This is the home stretch. We've got to be beating these teams. These are all playoff caliber teams. We can't be losing against them. Got to see teams beating these teams. Come on, Mavericks. Get it together. Mavericks staying at number seven. All right, new number six team. No, 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 no new number six team. Number six team still the 76ers. This week, 76ers, they beat the Mavericks. Good win. They beat the Heat. That's, eh, it's a win. I, I give them credit for taking care of business. And then they beat the Lakers. Uh, but then they lose to the Raptors. I mean, yeah, they, a nice 3-1 and one this week. Very well done. But no domination. This is where we can't move the 76ers up. Yes, they're taking care of business. But, I mean, folks, we got Joel Embiid, MVP discussion. You bring in James Harden. I mean, we're, we're looking at a little bit more. Our expectations are a little bit more than just taking care of business on the rag. Yes? I got to see some domination. Let's take a look. When was the last big time dominating win by the 76ers? And I call it like a dominating blowout win, like 10 or more points. So let's go. When was the last time the 76ers had a dominant win? Am I just not remembering them? Because we break them down every day and I haven't really remembered one. But let's take a look. Let's break down the numbers. Let's challenge our narrative. The 76ers not blowing out anybody. When was their last big time blowout win? Here we go. Looking at 10 or more points. Their last game against the Lakers. Win by five. Without LeBron. That's what I'm saying. That's a, Yes, you took care of business. But that's not a dominating win. When it should have been a dominating win. It's just Russell Westbrook out there. You beat Russell Westbrook by five points. Uh, you see the issue? Do y'all got an issue? If y'all don't have an issue with that, am I overreacting? I don't think so. Jeez. They beat the Lakers by five. They beat the Heat by seven. I mean, folks, this Heat team crumbling, and they only went by seven. Take care of business. Good. We give you credit for that. But come on, domination. You're a little bit better than just taking care of business. They lose against the Raptors. They beat the Mavericks by 10. All right, a nice, nice double-digit win there. I give them credit. Did Luka Doncic play in this game? Let me double check. Luka Doncic, he did play in the game. So that's a good win by the 76ers. All righty. What else do we got? Besides that, let's go a little bit deeper. Here we go. Against the Cavs, we are at March 16th at this point. Against the Cavs, they win by four. Against the Nuggets, they lose. Against the Magic, they win by two. Against the Magic, they win by two. Against the LeBronsless Lakers, they win by five. Are we starting to see what we're talking about here? Against the Nets, they lose by 29. Against the Bulls, finally, a big-time blowout win. Was that 15? points yeah that's what we're talking about uh the Bulls but you know at the end of the day it's the Bulls they're not even a good team anymore but we still give them credit still blow out when uh we give them credit there against the Heat they lose against the Cavs another time they win by six against the Knicks they blow out the Knicks back to back March uh, March 2nd and February 27th. So, I mean, in the last month, we're looking at kind of like one, two blowout wins, which is good, but we've got to get, I think we got to do a little bit more. One of the blowout wins was against the Bulls. Can we even count that? I will give them the Mavericks blowout. That's why they are ahead of the Mavericks at the current moment. But, I mean, come on. We can't move them up any more than that. 76ers, please. Can we start doing a little bit better, please? Ma uh, 76ers at number six still. 
All right, here we go. New number five team. Nope, nope. Still the same team. Timberwolf saying at number five here. And uh, this was uh, this was tough. Uh, I definitely could have maybe moved the 76ers up one spot to the Timberwolves and all that. But the Timberwolves have been pretty good this week. They beat the Bucks, Great win. They lost against the Mavericks by two. Close loss. And then they lost against the Suns by nine. But remember, I mean, they really were competitive the entire game. They had the lead for some of the game. They just kind of lost it in the fourth quarter. So I'm giving credit to the Timberwolves for not having as much talent as the 76ers do or just kind of the uh, the allure of the 76ers that they have and all that. And the Timberwolves are still giving us great competitive production. So, yeah, I probably could have dropped the Timberwolves da back down a spot to six, but I'm not going to reward the 76ers for lackluster play. I'm going to give it to the Timberwolves that are trying their damnedest. Uh, you know, they've been battling for a playoff spot and not just a playing tournament spot. They had the number six seed for a second, ended up losing it there, uh, but they're competing. They're competitive. They're trying to win against the best teams. They were competitive. They almost beat the Suns, the best team in the league, one of the best teams in the league. So I'm going to kind of keep the 76ers, I'm going to keep the Timberwolves, keep giving them a nod here, and I'm going to keep them at number five. Alrighty, here we go. New number four team. Yes, finally. All right. This team dropping back a little bit here. We're going Bucks at number four, dropping back down from two to four. And they're dropping down not really because of anything they've done themselves, but because of how great some other teams have been. We got to move back down the Bucks. So this week, the Bucks, they beat the Bulls and the Wizards. No great wins there. They lose against the Timberwolves. Once again, kind of why we have the Timberwolves at number five here. But Bucks will have to go down to number four. Giannis is great, all that. Brooke Lopez now back, all that's looking good. Uh, guard play, even though you know they're not the deepest at guard play, they're still getting it figured out. So Bucks looking good. Don't get me wrong, but other teams have been better. So let's talk about why these teams are moving up. So Bucks drop down from two to four. New number three team here going up a spot. We're moving up the Grizzlies. I mean, winning without John Morant, that's what we're talking about. That's the domination we want to see. Do the do the 76ers win without Joel Embiid? I don't think so. We don't know, so we can't say for sure, but I don't think so, folks. So, you know, 76ers, that's why they're staying at six. Grizzlies winning without John Morant. This week, they beat the Rockets, the Nets, the Pacers. They lose against the Hawks, and that was the game that they did have John Morant win. And, you know, we didn't let the Grizzlies get away with it then, but you know, able to kind of overcome that and, you know, losing one game with John Morant or winning three games without him. I think that's kind of impressive. I'm going to move the Grizzlies up to number three here. We've got two more weeks of John Morant's sideline, so we'll see if the Grizzlies can continue to hold this three seed or if they drop back. So this is going to be a big week for the Grizzlies. Let's see if they can keep getting it done without John Morant. Grizzlies at number three. And then here we go. The top two teams, the teams that are leaps and bounds ahead of the rest of the competition here. And I'm going to do it, folks. I can't really decide one or the other. I'm taking them both at number one. Both these teams that are at number one. We're going to keep the Celtics at number one, one. Um, and move the Suns up to 1-1 as well. <laughs> so here we go. Suns at 1, Celtics at 1. Suns getting it done without Chris Paul. Chris Paul's back. They win the game, no problem. This week, the Suns win a perfect 4-0. They beat the Bulls, the Kings, the Timberwolves, and the Nuggets. Really solid competition there, especially without Chris Paul. A little shorthanded. Get Chris Paul back. They end up winning, no problem. Devin Booker really kind of has made an MVP case over this five, six-week stretch of no Chris Paul out here. And uh, the Suns just cru cruising, rolling, dominating, winning in dominating fashion. Able to win in dominating fashion, 20-plus points, 10-plus points, without Chris Paul. Without Chris Paul, and they're still able to dominate. 76ers, are you listening? Yes. Suns at number one. And then the Celtics, once again, still at number one here. They went four this week, a perfect week. They beat the Kings, the Nuggets, the Thunder, and the Jazz. Looking really good. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown doing their thing. Marcus Smart facilitating the floor absolutely flawlessly. Getting great production from Derek White and Peyton Pritchard and Daniel Tice off the bench is something I never thought I would see in my lifetime. I never thought I would be here saying Peyton Pritchard is giving us solid production by the Celtics. So, there's that. And I never thought, oh, Daniel Tice would return to the Celtics this season and do solid work off the bench. I never thought we would be saying this and also let's shout out to um the starters the other starters besides Jason Tatum Jalen Brown 
in Marcus Smart. I mean, we're talking about Robert Williams and Al Horford in the starting lineup at the big positions, getting it done as well. This Celtics team, flawless, folks. This is what we mean. Celtics able to dominate, win by 20 points when they've got half the talent that the 76ers do. No great deep depth that the 76ers do, that uh, the Jazz do. Oh my goodness, this is what we're talking about. The Jazz need to be out of the top 10. The Celtics don't even have a, a tenth of the depth that the Jazz do. And here they are dominating four straight wins in a week. They're on a five-game win streak. Suns are on a seven-game win streak at the current moment. Getting it done. Winning games. Dominating. It's the back end of the season. Celtics trying to claim up that number one seed in the Eastern Conference and they're doing everything in their power to do that. Nothing stopping them. Celtics, Suns, both the number one best team in the league. Do they face each other recent, um, uh, coming up here? I really kind of hope we get Celtics versus Suns at some point before the end of the regular season. Let me quickly take a look here. Or, or are we going to be rocking with code number ones for the rest of the year, folks? We could. I, I, would, I would have no problem doing that. Code number ones, absolutely. All right, here we go. Let me get up their schedule. Here we go. Suns for the remainder of the season. I'm hoping to see the Celtics. What do we got? What do we got? We got them facing the 76ers, Warriors, Grizzlies, Thunder, Lakers, Clippers, Jazz, Kings. Damn, damn, damn. Don't face the Celtics. But once again, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I mean, we got like eight, nine, 10, 11 games for the rest of these teams. So make the most of it. You are on notice now. Everybody is officially on notice. Get it together or or we'll chop this top 10 down to a top 2, top 3. I will chop it down. Better play. Consistent play. Blowouts when you can. Get it done. Uh, damn. Celtics, Suns at number 1. All right, here we go. To recap the rest of the list here, we got Pelicans at 10, Raptors at 9, Nets at 8, Mavs at 7, 76ers at 6, Timberwolves at 5, Bucks at 4, Grizzlies at 3, Suns and Celtics both at what? Everybody is now on notice. No more excuses. Get it done the back end of the season, please.